So welcome back to another episode everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about four different types of smashes and it's so, so, so important that you learn the different kinds of smashes because when you have variation in your game, it makes you so much more unpredictable. You know, you have a lot more weapons at your disposal. You know the different kinds of weapons to use at the right situation and basically that will bring your smash game, your killing shot, your end game to the to a whole new level. So it's very important you learn this smasher, so stay tuned. We're gonna be covering four different types of smash shots. The first is the full smash, also known as the heavy smash, heavy smash. Uh, the second would be the half smash, which is not quite half your strength, Third is the flick smash, so tiensa, flick smash, and last of all would be the slicing smash shot. Okay, so we're going to be covering how to do it, the pros of each technique, as well as the cons of each technique. So let's begin. So first up is the full smash. So here's how you can do the full smash. So some of the pros of the heavy smash is that compared to the other types of smashes, this is the heaviest type of smash. So this means that it's very hard for the opponent to control, uh, it's very difficult to counter back because of the pure weight of that smash or the speed of the smash. So some of the problems or the cons of this heavy smash is that the full smash is that the full smash uses a lot of stamina. It burns your stamina every time you do a full smash. Because typically, people do the full smash, they, they jump and do the full smash. So they do a double leg jump full smash burns a lot of energy and it makes you very vulnerable sorry a lot slower in the follow-up because you use your whole body weight to push the shuttle forward that means that your follow-up is going to be a lot slower so usually it's used in the end shot the uh, as the final shot to kill the opponent and very often it's used in doubles where you have a partner to help cover the front so now on to the second type of smash which is the half smash So here's how you do the half smash. Some of the pros of doing the half smash is that it's very effective in stealing cheap points. Like if your opponent is not prepared for the half smash, especially during singles, they do the high serve, they're not prepared, you're gonna steal that point. So that's the first. And secondly, it starts off the game by applying pressure. So this smash shot is not meant to kill, but it's meant to apply pressure to your opponent because if they're not ready, they're gonna get killed. But even if they're ready, they can't do much because it's after all a downwards, relatively hard smashing shot. Thirdly, is that when you do the half smash, you are very prepared for the next shot because you know that this smash is not meant to kill, you're not putting your entire momentum into it. So that means that your, your next shot, you are a lot more prepared, you can follow up a lot faster. So now let's talk about some of the cons of doing the half smash. If your opponent is prepared, you're going to be ready for a lot of pain because your opponent can counter the half smash relatively easy because it's not sharp, it's not meant to be sharp, it's not meant to kill, it's only meant to apply pressure and if your opponent is ready for that shot, they can counter it relatively easily and put a lot of pressure on you instead. So now let's move on to the third kind of smash which is the flick smash. So here's how you can do the flick smash. So 
people think smash the misconception is that people think it's like that. But it's mostly a click. Like that. There are several pros of using the flick smash. The first is, of course, unpredictability. So the flick smash is usually very sudden, like you try to change your tempo and then you add a flick and you know, you're know you doing a normal rally. People think you're going to lock, you're going to drop, you do it a flick smash instead. So it's unpredictable, it's hard to tell when you're going to do the flick smash so that it has a lot of element, it has the element of surprise in it and therefore it's used very extensively in singles. A lot of players use the flick smash a lot because it's unpredictable and that's how you can kill very skilled, strong defense kind of player. Players with very strong defense with the element of uh, unpredictability. So you can't tell which direction or when they're going to do the flick smash. And the second thing is that the flick smash is generally or always very sharp. So it, it's the whole idea of the flick smash is you want to attack a weak point. So the angle, the steepness, the, the angles are always very sharp and deadly. So that's the second strong point of the flick smash. That being said, the problem with the flick smash is that it's not as hard as the heavy smash. So if it's not as hard as the heavy or half smash, that means that the shuttle is going to be much easier for the opponent to control. Meaning if your opponent can get to the shuttle, they can easily lift the shuttle do the cross defend because the shuttle is a lot softer. And the second problem of doing the flick smash is that it is much harder for you to control because if you're trying to do the flick smash, you want to aim for the corners or certain parts of uh, you know, the, the body. So that means that you need a lot of accuracy. So imagine this, you are playing an important game, it's 29 all, you're trembling. And then are you going to do the flick smash? it's a lot harder to do it compared to the heavy smash because uh, it requires a lot more control. So now we move on to the last kind of smash shot which is the slicing smash and here's how you can do the smashing shot. Slicing shot. And once again, some of the strengths of using the slice shot is that it's very deceptive because there is an element of you know, a slice so that it looks as though you're hitting towards a different direction. So you're trying to hit, your racket moves right, shuttle moves left. So this sense of, this deception makes it a lot harder for your opponent to predict or move towards the right direction to where you're smashing. So that makes it very deceptive. Uh, and secondly, it slows the shuttle down. So apart from being deceptive in terms of the direction, it slows the shuttle down. Meaning to say that it's, uh, it's going to be a lot harder for your opponent to control the shuttle because, you know, you smash hard, I hit hard. But now the shuttle slows down, you can't control your strength anymore. You kind of need to adjust in order to hit the slice shot. So that makes it a lot harder for your opponent to control. That being said, some of the problems of doing the slicing smash is that it's, it, it's not very effective in killing your opponent outright because if it's slowing the shuttle down, that means that it's a lot easier to retrieve the shuttle, but it's a lot harder to control. So it's easier to retrieve, but harder to control. So pros and cons there. Uh, but bear in mind, usually people use the slice drop shot a lot more than the slice smash, but it's up to use. With that said, I've covered the four different types of smashing shots. Uh, even though I haven't really covered the use cases, like when is the most appropriate time to use the full smash, the half smash, the slice smash, this video really aims to help educate and share with you guys that there are so many different types of smashes that you can use. It's up to you to choose to learn them and choose the best kind of smash for your situation. So if you want to learn more, be sure to comment down in the comment section below. Hit the subscribe button. Click on the notification bell because your support will mean so, so much to me. I thank you for watching this video. Now that you've learned four different types of smash shots, the first thing I want you to do is practice it on this button right here. Ooh. Try again, try again. Come on, come on, come on.
It's a lot of practice. Come on, do it. Ooh, nice one.